Oh, hey, everybody. My name is Lex Lang. I'm a voice actor in Hollywood, California. And some of the characters I've played over the years are Dr. Neo Cortex uh, in the Crash Bandicoot series. I've been Batman. I've been Dr. Doom. I've been War Greymon in Digimon. I play Suguru Ghetto in uh, Jujutsu Kaisen, um, all kinds of stuff. I've been doing it for 27 years, and I just absolutely love it. And guess what? Oh, what, Cortex? You're watching Amber the Fangirl, ATF, and you're going to like it. You understand? <laughs> all right. Enjoy the show. Hi, guys. Amber here. Welcome back to In Conversation with ATF. My guest today is a voice actor, a voice actor who I've wanted to speak to for the longest time. I am so, so excited. My guest is the voice of Toe Line in Transformers, the Robots in Disguise from 2001. Dr. Cortex, Dr. Neo Cortex from the Crash Bandicoot franchise. Tucci, Tucci in Naruto. Is that how you pronounce his name? Tucci, yeah. Hey. Have some ramen, Naruto. <laughs> Oh, I, I didn't know how to pronounce it at first. So I was like, oh, you get sort of, you know, yeah. sort of like, yeah, you had on sure, but yeah, that's very good. I pronounced it right. Very. Um, Hundley and the doorman in Curious George. Right. Um, Gomon Ishimawa. No, go Goemon Ishikawa. Goemon Ishimawa. In from the, Lupin the Third, yes. In a, yeah, in the Lupin, uh, was it the film franchise or the video game? Franchise? It's everything. For in 17, a... I played him for about 17 years. That's how old I am. <laughs> All right, well, there you go. Since you were born, I've been playing Goemon. Oh, really? And my... Cortex. Cortex before you were born, if you're 17. My guest is Lex Lang. Hey. Hi, Lex. Hi. <laughs> yes. Yes, indeed. Oh my, like, I'm excited I, to be here. It's nice. I can't tell you how much I admire you, not just as a person, as a voice actor as well. I love your performances in like Robots in Disguise, Curious George, um, the Crash Bandicoot um, franchise. Man, you're, you're such an amazing person. I'm oh. just smiling so much. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. I'm happy to be here. Oh, that's yeah. wonderful. It's yeah, been so, a great fun career over the years. Oh yeah, but you've worked with so many good voice actors, definitely. So I'd like to start off by asking, of course, Crash Bandicoot franchise, you took over from Clancy Brown as the voice of Dr. Cortex. So did you try and base your voice off his or did you try and put your own spin on it? Well, both. Um, you know, he retired from the role. Um, he was doing some on-camera stuff. He's still doing on-camera stuff. In fact, he just had a really big part on the new Dexter uh, regular series, Dexter New Blood, I think it's called. Oh, wow. Um, he played like one of the main villains in that show, which was he did a fantastic job. But anyway, he went on to do some on-camera and so there was an audition, just like a normal audition that I would get from my agent that was for Dr. Cortex. And they had uh, a little clip of Clancy so we could see if we could sound alike, sound like him. And I remember the clip was just a few lines. One of them was, the race is mine. And he, he said, like, the race is mine. Like, that's how he said it. And so I, I did that. I repeated all the, all the audition parts. And um, I got a call for a callback. And I, I guess I was in the running with about 20 people. And then from there, I got a second call back, which was, I think I was in the running with three people at that point. And at that point, they basically said, well, if you had this character, what would you, would you do anything different or how would you evolve this character? And um, based on talking to the director a little bit, we said, well, we'd make him more fun, a little more fun. He'd, he'd be a little more comical than he was in the first couple of games. So that's what we did. We made him a little more flamboyant, a little more fun. And then I got the, I got the part and I started on a show called, not a show, but a game called Twin Sanity. Okay. That was, that was the first game that I did. And it was really cool because I could uh, look at the line that was in the script, but then they said, Hey, you know, you're really starting to develop this character. You're kind of the new voice of it. So if you have any improv, you know, just improvisation on lines. So we'd read the one as, as is, and then I'd improv three or four lines. And a lot of that improv stuff made it into the game, which made it really funny. So it was a good, it was a good uh, initial christening of the role for me. And uh, since then I did all the ones after Twin Sanity. And then they came back around to redo the Insane Trilogy, which were the first three. And then, um, 
you know, of course they have the new ones too. Like it's about time and stuff like that. Yeah, so. and Crash on the Run, which is the new Crash mobile the game. Run. Yeah, yeah, that's right. I've some. I've been crashed for all of them. I think the only one that they skipped over when they did the redo was uh, the Wrath of Cortex. Uh, I think they skipped that one. Um, but uh, you know, if they remake that, I'm sure I'll I'll be doing that one too. Yeah, I, I hope you are. That, I hope you, for many years to come, I hope you're up in the cortex. Thank I'll, you. Yeah, I'll me too. Me too. Some. I'd love to. I'd love for there to be an animated series. That would be so much fun. I would love that as well. <laughs> Could I hear some Doctor Neocortex? Oh yes, Doctor Cortex here. Oh, I'm with my voice actor Lex Lang, and we're here. Well, you're watching Conversation with Amber the Fangirl, ATF. Now go do something exciting. Oh my god. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> oh, yes. I'm literally I can't tell you how happy I am right now to talk to you. I need to stop <laughs> this is an interview. <sighs> You're a normal human being. Everyone, yeah, everyone thanks. else I talk to is normal. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'm, I'm normal too. I have the same, you know, same stuff happens to me as does every other human. I have updates, yeah. I have down days, I have days where, you know, I'm I'm very confident and happy and other days where I'm fearful and, and, you know, sad. So yeah. I'm just, uh, just like all you guys out there, we have our ups and downs and we get, we get through them together, you know? Yeah, we definitely do. I, I agree with that. Yeah. As a ambassador for mental health awareness. Yeah. I, it costs nothing to be kind. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Talking about Crash, I'd like to ask about the voice acting aspect of it. I know we've just talked about it, but I'd like to ask you another <laughs> question. Have there been any Crash yeah. games that you've recorded as an ensemble with the rest of the cast, or do you tend to just record separately? Uh, yeah, all separately. Uh, I was going to yeah. say, because you've worked with a lot of good people. I think uh, Corey Burton yeah. is an Entropy Engine nitrous oxide have you met him in person yet i have i have we've worked on a few uh warner brothers animated series together oh um, like the batman and uh, justice league unlimited and he's a very talented voice actor really good guy and uh, but yeah most of the time we see each other in the halls you know like one person will be coming out the other person will be yeah. signing in and, and we'll talk we're all we're all good friends it's a pretty close-knit group of people especially if you have um work that overlaps into original animation or anime yeah you get a chance to see a lot of the same faces and yeah so it's it's nice that way it's kind yeah. of a fam- it's kind of a family of support i'm glad to hear that do you play your own video games like have you ever played any of the crash games that you've I've always played them in? i've played most of them um i'm not a great gamer so i don't ever get to like the levels i want to get to it takes me you know hours and hours and hours and hours to do it but mm-hmm. i played twin sanity i think till the end um i i've played uh insane trilogy that was a lot harder for me i don't know it just seemed like a harder game um and i've played various other games you know like call of duty and uh, star wars games and things that i've been in but uh, if i really want to see my work i have to go to youtube and look up that game and <laughs> character and someone has already you know pulled all the scenes from and put it up somewhere so that's that's generally what i do if i if i want to see my work but if i just want to play the game for fun yeah i, I play it i've got a couple of different consoles you know P- uh, playstation and an xbox and uh even back to gamecube because i was when i started doing uh video games there were a lot that were on gamecube so i still have some of those that's good. That's good. We have a GameCube, Nintendo 64, PS2, mm-hmm. Xbox 360, pretty much a lot of retro game consoles because I have older siblings, so obviously we grew up with pretty much most of the game consoles. I think Crash, we have Crash Bash and Crash Bandicoot Warp for the PS1, if wow. that makes you feel old. <laughs> yeah, like the original, original ones. And good thing I wasn't on that. <laughs> and then I found out my parents used to play them. I'm like, What? <laughs> and now they, they, they don't play them anymore. I'm like, hmm, why didn't you tell me this? <laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, cool. Do you play Animal Crossing? I don't. I don't. I've seen it, but I don't play it. I've, I've, I always ask everyone <laughs> this because obviously it's probably my most favorite game of all time. I have an Isabel cut out over there. I have Animal Crossing oh, bed cool. sheets, plush toys. 
<laughs> so I'm always it's asking. Super fun. It's super fun. I've seen it, but I just don't have it to play. I have seen a few um, Crash Bandicoot designs in game. I remember someone, well, they have umbrellas in game and they design them to make it look like 3D cubes and they've done like TNT and nitro boxes. Oh, wow. Yeah, and someone's made a, a cut out of Crash Bandicoot with like a hole in the middle so you can stick your face in. All right, wow. So Very creative. Cool. Yeah, so creative. The amount of designs that people come up with for these, these video games, really. <laughs> I'm just trying to. Uh, I keep I keep thinking in my notes because my phone's on low battery mode, so I'm having to no. unlock it and stuff. <laughs> it's all so good. I, it's all good. Oh, that's good. I gotta breathe. I gotta breathe. Let's talk Transformers: Robots in Disguise. Do you voice Toe Line, and was it just Toe Line? Yeah, it was just Toe Line. What was it like working on that show then? Because obviously, you got voice cast Wally Winger, Bob Joles, Neil Kaplan. Couple of, I can't remember if that's Kaplan. Yeah. Kaplan. Yeah. I keep yeah. forgetting. I'm so sorry. So no, Michael McConaughey was the voice director for it. What was it like doing so, that show? So many people on that show. My wife Sandy Fox. Played oh yeah, Ty. Sandy. Yeah, you married she to Sandy Fox. Ty, Ty, the uh, AI that's the at the control room. That was her. My part was really really small. Uh, it was. You know, I think he said a lot of the same lines. I mean, I know he had some individual lines too, but I think his major line was like, no parking means no parking, you know, like one of those kind of things. It's just a tow truck, right? So um, it was fun to be on that show. Um, you know, quite frankly, I don't, I don't remember a lot of the sessions. It was so long ago. It was like right at the be kind of the beginning of when I started doing voice acting. So it was yeah, 21 years years ago. Yeah, 21 years ago. So, I mean, oh, gosh, no. that's way too long ago. <laughs> but I, I remember that uh, it was it was fun. You know, at the time, it was a really popular show on Fox Kids, I think. And, um, you know, we went to some conferences. I'm actually getting ready to do a Transformer convention at the end of next month uh, here in Los Angeles. Yeah, so. Really? Which one? It's a, I think it's called T C T F C Con Transformers. Oh, T F Con. T F Con. Yeah, T F Con. Oh, really? Oh, I've been. I'm trying to get to Los Angeles to go to that con because I know wow. a lot of people who are going. So, I. Wow. Okay. Well, it's my first time there, so maybe people will be interested in in uh, tow line and and uh, some of the other stuff that I do. Yeah. Hopefully. Um. Oh, what was I going to tell? Have you been to have you been to England before? I have. I've been to London and um, I was at the London Comic Con that was at the big convention center there that's like like off the river there. Um, MCM? MCM, yes. I was at MCM. When did you go? Um, I want to say like seven years ago, maybe seven or eight years ago. All right. I last went to the one in 2019. Okay, it was it was before they sold to Read Pop. It was still like a privately owned. It was, it was oh, huge, it was huge. But yeah, the last oh, couple yeah. years have been Read Pop. I think. Yeah, I'd love to go back. All I need are people to request me. So, as yeah. opposed to trying to sell myself on something, I just rather have fans ask for it. Yeah, yeah, of course. I, I definitely request you. The last one I went to, I think, had Tara Strong, Nolan North, Troy Baker. Yeah, oh, yeah. a lot of good voice acts. I only met Tara because at the time I didn't really know who Nolan and Troy were. I'm so sorry. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, they're mostly gaming uh, voice actors for yeah. famous for a couple of specific roles. Yeah, yeah. But they're great, real good actors, real good, nice people, super nice. Well, it's good to hear. Hopefully, they come back over here because I'd love to properly meet them. So let's let's talk about Curious George now. Of course, I grew up watching Curious George. Well, as you can probably tell, it was released around the same time. Uh, no, at the same time I was born, but I suppose it was released when I was only two years old, 2006. Yes. What yeah. was it like working on that show? Well, that show is one of my favorite shows to work on. I play the doorman and yeah. his dog, Hundley. The doorman uh, he sounds kind of like, the doorman sounds like this. He's like, let's go clean the lobby, George. <laughs> He's got kind of a friendly, old-timey voice. Mm -hmm. And his dog, Hundley, who's a, a little dachshund, um, sounds a little more like a hound when he talks and barks. He's they, they like him sounding like a, woo, 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 where he does that kind of a sound. And he does a lot of like... Uh, little tiny accents of sounds like 
and like, you know, frustration and helping George do stuff. He likes to clean. He likes to have his lobby very clean. So when George makes a mess, Hunley's always doing a little harumph kind of, and he does that kind of sound. But uh, it's great because the guy who plays Curious George's name is Frank Welker. And he <laughs> is probably the, great, the greatest animation voice actor that's ever been, in my opinion. And um, also Jeff Bennett plays the man in the yellow hat. And he's just spectacular. He's, there's really nothing that Jeff or um, either of those guys can not do. They're just super, super talented. And of course, the guests on that show are like uh, Jim Cummings and... E.G. Daly, and Susan and, Silo, and Debbie Derryberry. Yeah, all those extra guests there—they're they're always great. And that one we do always record together. That's not separate, so we all sit together, and Aww. it's always—it's like a—it's like a master class for anyone there because you're watching these immense talents work, and they, you know, when they're working, they're working, and in between the takes, it's a lot of fun and impressions and all kinds of like great, uh, great times um also reno romano plays the narrator he's a very very good voice actor too wasn't it yeah. william h macy for the first season I yeah think i think the first couple, first few seasons it was william h macy yeah but, and i think the last at least the last 12 seasons it's been uh reno <clears throat> yeah i'm just having a look now um the doorman yeah you replaced bill chot as the voice of the doorman i believe yeah, I, I didn't know him. I, apparently, I was told, I don't know, I assume this is true, but I was told that he moved and retired from voice acting. And it was a great day because, again, I had to audition. I listened to his uh, thing and, and uh, his um, vocal sample. And that sample, he said, a doorman's door as, 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 is as important as his uniform. So that's the one I remember. A doorman's door is as important as his uniform. And so that's the audition piece that I did. And, and I'll always remember that. And that's how I get into character when I get there at the session is I go over that line a couple of times and I go, okay, ready to go. You're bringing back a lot of memories with that quote you are. <laughs> I remember it so well. Um, you said about Frank Welker. You, do you think, <laughs> I know him. I know that guy. <laughs> Oh, good. He did an interview with you. Wonderful. He's well, wonderful. It wasn't an interview. It was a video chat with Galaxy Con. I don't think he does interviews. Oh, okay. I want to, I want to have him on my channel, though. He'd be great to talk to. Yeah. He's I've, really met, good. I've met him in person as well. He did. He came to a UK con just before the pandemic. So. Yeah, he's, he's a wonderful person, like really wonderful person. And just he's all you can always learn something anytime you're in obsession with him just because he's so good and you just watch him and take it in it's really awesome yeah i was gonna ask have you got any good frank Wilker stories do you see him outside the studio well, i i heard you had a curious george rap party at the san diego zoo did you go to it i did not go to that one i wasn't able to i was doing another job that went a little bit later it was at the la zoo i think but um oh was it uh, I see. yeah um but uh no i didn't get to go to that one you know frank is is every story is a good story about frank because he, <laughs> he's so talented and once you get him and jeff and 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 uh, a couple jim cummings and yeah, people jeff like is that, lovely. <laughs> once, you, once you get them in the room together then you know it's like an entire show in between the show you know every time a scene happens so like they're they do like um dueling impressions of things or dueling uh sound effects you know they'll do all these crazy sound effects and and so every, every time with frank is is a great one he's also a pilot not a lot of people know this but he's a he's an airplane pilot know so that. He, he flies he a beechcraft b36 tc bonanza wow you know more than i do yeah he, <laughs> he's uh so I, I always wanted to get a lift from him it's like mate let's go fly to palm springs and back you know but hasn't yeah. happened yet. So he's just told you about his pilot career then. He, you've not had any flights with I haven't um, had any flights Welker with Welker Airlines. <laughs> no, wow. no, I haven't had any on Welker Airlines yet. <laughs> wow, that's so cool. I'm just I'm I'm jealous in a good way though. I can tell you yeah. that now. Yeah. <laughs> I miss Frank dearly. I video chatted him uh, last month. Yeah. So good good man. Yeah. I've just oh man, I just I, I'm just I just want to like on my channel as an interview like so badly but other people have been turned down by him saying he's unable to participate this time because he's a busy man he's like one of the busiest people in the voiceover business but yes hopefully one day one day you can I'll do it you'll get him on there 
Yeah, I'll just have to say, oh yeah, um, this list of people want you to do an interview for my channel. <laughs> yeah, but who knows? Who knows? It could be audio, it could be video. I don't, I don't know. But we'll yeah. come, we'll cross that path when we get to it. I'll tell you that now. Um, going back to England, you obviously you were at MCM London. Was there any other parts in London that you decided to explore during your time there? Yeah, we went and saw a couple of shows. Um, I don't know what that's called. The is it the West End or what, West where End? Are all the West End. Yeah, we saw a few different shows while we were there. Um, the UK's answer to Broadway, really. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, loved that. That was really, really nice. Um, you know, traveled around a little bit. Um, saw some museums and things like that. Just a couple of them, and. Um, besides that it was just uh you know enjoy the we t- we took let's see where did we go um we were on i want to say it's hyde park right hyde, hyde park yeah we saw hyde park in the marble arch and um we took a what's the street that hyde park is sort of on that has all the shops and things is that uh gotta be street I think. Maybe it was maybe it was that yeah, but we took a walk along there, which was real nice, and um, just kind of tried to get outdoors. You know, Hyde Park is a really famous park for a lot of concerts and people speaking. You know, like uh, orators and and uh, mm-hmm. people talking about very important issues and things like that. So it was a lot of fun. We, we got around as much as we could for the free time we had. Yeah, I'm having a look um, now. I mean, got I'm... on got on some double decker buses and. Um, <clears throat> Drove around a little bit. Did even the tourist bus too. We got on that and went all around. So, oh, yeah. really? Yeah, it was fun. Oh, that's so I cool. recommend it. I'm trying to have a look what um, road you're on about with all the shops. Hmm. Well, you know, it's. Um, I've, I'll, I'll have to think about it, but. Um, I've been come, to London, but I, I don't think I've ever done Hyde Park. No, hang on. No, I, I might have done it a few years back. It's the same street that the Marble Arch is right up against. It's like that same street. Uh, it's correct. Right. I think I have. It's the A5, I think. I, I don't know. <laughs> uh, Ma- what street is Marble Arch on? <laughs> this is like um, Oxford. It's on the corner of Oxford, Oxford Street and Edgware Road. It's Oxford Street. Yeah, it's Oxford Street. Oh, right. That whole street has a lot of different shops and a lot yeah. of great yeah real have cool you, have you been to leicester square and or piccadilly circus yes both i love leicester yeah. square it's the same thing park. isn't it there's a it's close yeah, to each other. uh piccadilly circus is the one with the big the big billboards that are like round and curved and stuff leicester squares where like m&m world is odeon um oh, okay. big lego shop okay just, yeah yeah it's, it's big and so many cinemas in leicester square <laughs> Okay, yeah, I've been to the, those areas. Those are cool. cool. There's, there's, back one, back there's one that has a big circle and a statue in the middle and a lot of like people doing performance art and things uh, there. So that might be... Trafalgar might Square? Be, Trafalgar Nelson's Square, Scott. that might be it, yeah. Nelson's got... Nelson's got... Is that the same? I don't, I don't know. I haven't been to London <laughs> since before the pandemic, so... Same here. It was yeah. like eight years ago, so I don't really remember. <clears throat> yeah, I can tell you this. Um <laughs> The same venue MCM was at the XL. That's actually where I witnessed my first voiceover gig in action. Um, wow. It was at a convention. It was like an exhibition called EAG. It's for like amusement machines and stuff. Um, I voiced a little corner operated children's ride that was exhibited there. I'm not sure if you can see. It's right here. Okay. It's there. It's a little yeah. helicopter. Um, okay. I did the lines all from home, no professional equipment, just my uh, my Apple headphones and my little microphone. I did nice. that, and I got exhibited in London. And unfortunately, the company who did it then went closed down because of the pandemic. So there's only two models that exist in the world. One is in storage in Yorkshire somewhere at the moment. The other is in Iceland, Reykjavik. Wow. Yeah. So it's so cool because now, like, it was. There was so supposed to be like 100 models made. If it wasn't for COVID, there'd probably be one. Those are everywhere. Right. They said there isn't, but it was fun. It was fun to see it in person. I'm glad I did. That's nice. Yeah, it is indeed. Day two. Well, not day. Well, I suppose it's part two. I'm adding it on to the end of the interview. Okay. Hi. So this is part two. 
this is recorded i think about a week it's been a week since we last spoke in a, a week already yeah yeah so i thought I might as well just add this part onto the last yeah, part yeah might as well yeah 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 it's easier that way lex i've got five more questions for you Are you ready All right. yes go cool right so do you prefer to do voice work with other people or by yourself I prefer it with other people. I like to have like the cast, like a theater style cast where we get to do the whole show together. We get to feel like all the interactions, the changes, get a lot of laughs in between. That's my preference, but I'm not, I'm not object to doing it by myself because that's what the majority of the work is, is by ourselves. Good answer, definitely. I mean, I would half agree, half not agree. Like sometimes it depends what mood I'm in. I would prefer maybe recording with an ensemble if it's like a good voice cast, but if I'm not in the mood or if I just want to be left alone, I just, it would just be me on my own and the engineer. Well, mm -hmm. that's mainly what it's like nowadays. So yeah, the pandemic's pretty much changed a lot of things. Oh yeah, sure has. Yeah, very sad, yeah. I've got another question for you. To question right. two. That's have continue. you met Clancy Brown before? And if you have, have you talked about neocortex with him, Dr. Neocortex? Well, I, I've worked with Clancy several times. Um, I think all of them were before I took over as Neo. Um, I think. I'm not positive. You know, I worked with him on a few different Warner Brothers shows. He plays Lex Luthor. And um, or on some of them, I think it was the Batman that he plays Lex Luthor on. Well, you can look it up, but uh, the show I was working on, maybe it was Justice League Unlimited, but he was playing Lex Luthor at the time. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, at that same session where we're all together, a, a on-camera actor named Michael Rosenbaum was there as well. And now he plays Lex Luthor on Smallville, oh. on the Superman TV show. And my name is Lex. So it was funny because every time the director would say Lex, all three of us would go, yes, <laughs> because he's Lex Luthor, Lex Luthor and Lex Lang, you know? And uh, so we had a really fun time doing that. And then after, after we were recorded, I had a chance to sit with Clancy and just become friends with him. And we talked, you know, we talked all kinds of stuff, poker and automobiles and sports and things that, you know, guys just tend to talk about when you're sitting and waiting to, to go into the studio. But um, yeah, we, we became friends and uh, we've, you know, we're acquaintances still like I, I, we don't hang out or anything together at this point in our lives, but anytime we see each other, we're always really friendly and, you know, we have a mutual respect for one another and uh yeah, but I don't think we've talked about Cortex. I think maybe next time I see him, I'll, I'll talk with him about it a little. You should have Cortex off, see if you sound similar to each other. Yeah. Well, I had to audition by, you know, the audition I did was I was given a sample of his voice. So I had to sound like him at least at the very beginning to be cast as it. That's fair. Definitely. Yeah, I remember the one line he said, the race is mine. And that's the one I listened to over and over. He was just going, the race is mine. And he just kept saying that, you know, I kept listening to that over and over. And then I would do that voice as part of the other lines of the audition. And it wasn't until I got to the uh, actual job that the director said, you, you sound just like what we've been doing, but we want to change what we've been doing. And I, I said, well, how so? And he said, well, we want to make it, uh, we want to bring an air of comedy to the character. He's still the mega maniacal wants to take over the rule the world and world domination and all that, but he's just missing the ability to do so by just one little, you know, one iota. So like he thinks he can do it, but he's just going to get crushed down every time. And every time he's going to fail and every time it's going to be like, Oh no crush. You know, like it's always going to be that kind of like belabored, you know, comedic, uh, you know, method of talking, you know, so, so they gave me a lot of leeway with that. They said, we'll do the lines, how they're written. And then you just give us the new cortex for whatever you want to improvise. So we, we've been doing that for 17 years now. 17 years and I may see it in less than a week. <laughs> yeah. So actually I think I started probably before you were born. Um, I think, I think I want to say, when did twin sanity come out? Two thousand and four four i think i might be but i think it was 2004 i'll just quickly have a look crash yeah. twin sanity yep 2004 
Yeah. So, so it's 18 years. So yeah. like you were just getting ready to be born when the new cortex was born. You were both <laughs> born at the same time. <laughs> yeah. And my older brother played Crash Bandicoot. So it was most likely at the time he was probably playing it and listened to your voice. Wow. My mother was pregnant with me. Yeah, you probably heard it from inside the womb. Who probably know? the womb? I'm like, oh, what's going on? What's <laughs> who, 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 who is who is this? Who is this person? Oh. Dad? <laughs> <You know. Huh? laughs> oh, man. Oh, you're too good, Lex. Oh. <laughs> Actually, here's a good um thing that I, I didn't bring up last time now you were in the transformers dark of the moon video game you voiced some of the autobot and decepticon soldiers so what was it like doing that game did you record ensemble did you meet peter cullen <laughs> um for that for the game we just recorded by ourselves and we didn't ah. meet all the rest of the people um i was on a show called robots in disguise which was another um oh yeah our animated series and i play um i play who do i play uh i play toe line yeah he, did, he didn't say a lot really he just you know i mean he did have some dialogue but his memorable stuff was like no parking means no parking i think that was his big line no yeah. parking means no parking you know something like that and um so that's about my extent of transformers you know like just mm -hmm recording by myself doing just a few lines not having a real big part in it but being just a little tiny thread in the tapestry that's transformers so yeah yeah, yeah. um so have you met peter colin at all if i might if i may ask i have not i know you met frank but oh not peter yeah not peter i've never met peter mm. i've i've you know seen that he's been in the studio like an hour before me or oh. was scheduled to come in after me at some time but i never crossed literal paths with him oh well that's i hope i hope you two do meet one day because it'd be really nice meet up definitely that'd be cool yeah i'm just picturing it right now <laughs> all right let's both picture it'll happen <laughs> yeah i'm just picturing it in my mind Ooh. <laughs> My final question for you is, are you still working on Curious George? Because it said on Wikipedia that you did the voices of Honley and the Doorman from 2007 to 2015, but obviously they're still doing Curious George to this day. Is the Doorman and Honley still appear? Or do you... They do, yeah. And it's it's been, it's to this day. It's whenever I started. I think that was 12 years ago, 13 years ago is when I started on it. Um yeah, we just finished another season during the pandemic. It's on, let's see, well, who is it on now? It's either on Hulu. Is it Peacock? Is it Peacock? I think, I think so. Curious I don't know. George I, I, I think it's on Hulu also. I have a feeling that Hulu bought it or Hulu uh, bought Peacock. Hmm, because you can watch it on Hulu. I know that. Um, but yeah, yeah. The dog man and his dog Hunley is still alive and well. <laughs> it is on Peacock and it is on Hulu, I believe, and Netflix as well. So it's all oh, yeah. over. It's all yeah. over. You can you can always catch that. And it still has yeah. in England as well. So yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, I love I love doing that show. It's so much so much fun. I'm glad I grew up with it. Such yeah, me too. And it's it's made a difference in so many people's lives. It's, and it's funny when I meet like a little child. Uh, you know, like it's old enough to understand like someone making their voice sound like somebody else. They're not old enough to understand like I play that character on TV because they still think that character is real on TV. But if I say, hey, you know what? I can make my voice sound like the doorman and his dog on Curious George. Would you like to hear? And they go, uh-huh. You know, they're excited about it. And then I'll say, a doorman's doors is important as his uniform. And they just go, oh. You know, like they they totally freak out, and I'm like, oh, it's so great to see Aww. this little spirit light up. You know, I love Aww. that. I love so that. Sweet. So, when you recorded during the pandemic, I'm presuming you recorded by yourself on a Zoom call. Uh, yeah, when we I recorded from my home booth, and um, sometimes a couple times we recorded with the whole cast all through Zoom. Really? Uh, what with Frank as well? With Frank and whoever else. Wow. You know, all the and then, um, <laughs> But what they found as they went on and on is that it was a it took more time to record with the whole cast as it did to just record with the director. And because we all know our characters so well, it made sense for us just to go like, OK, let's just let's just get through the show and we'll just do your lines. And like the doorman might have, let's say, 10 lines in the whole script. 
Um, and so for me to sit there for the two hours it takes for the entire cast to go through the script two or three times doesn't make sense. It's much better to just have me come on, do my 10 lines in 30 minutes or whatever, a few times over, and then I'll be done, you know, and that way they can really maximize what they want to do. Yeah, that's fair. I think that pretty much wraps this interview up then. So I think you wanted to know what one of my favorite crash, the Dr. Cortex lines was, right? Oh, yes. 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 Did you find out? Well, I was looking online a little bit and, um, you know, there's so many funny ones, but one of them that just stuck out as being funny when I read it originally, and we improvised this, it, it was, I've ruined the lives of so many, I can't be expected to remember them all. You know, I always thought that was pretty funny. And then, um, you know, the fish line always gets a laugh because people think that's a funny line. They go, where did fish come from? But it, it's pulled out of context. You know, he's dealing with two penguins and he's basically talking and he's like, uh, you know, um, I think at one point he says something like, uh, oh, we all know the wrath of cortex didn't do as well as we hoped or whatever. And the, and the penguins are just staring at him blankly. So he reaches behind himself and he's like, fish you know like something they can relate to you know <laughs> like can i can i sway your opinion with fish you know so that was that was always one of my favorites too it was always pretty funny oh well, I, was, I was just i was just looking up i mean you were technically born into shavers you were born in hollywood <laughs> i was i was born in hollywood and um i was i only lived there for about five years and then you know when i was five my parents moved to arizona they took me with them luckily and uh, <laughs> Um, I lived in Arizona until I moved back to California to, back. To, to music school and all that fun stuff. Yeah. But uh, I'm glad we got a chance to do a quick second, second part. Yeah, here. same, we definitely. Cut short. Lex, where can we find you on social media? Okay. Well, most of the time it's either Instagram or TikTok these days. I still have a Facebook and Twitter, but I don't get to them as often as I'd like. So it's just at Lex Lang, which is my name at Lex Lang. And then for TikTok, it's just Lex Lang TikTok. And that's pretty easy to get to as well. So come follow, join, have fun, you know, make suggestions on, on TikTok. I, I kind of take suggestions. So if people in the comments want to hear or see something in particular, I'll do that. I'll, I'll like take, take uh, requests. So yeah, come say hi, come be a part of the, of the social media that I get to do. That'd be fun. Terrific. Guys, thank you so much for watching this. I'm glad I got to squeeze in a part two with Lex. Go check out Lex on social media. Go check out me on social media. Thank you for watching this interview and I'll see you around. Bye. Bye, guys.